Hey, how's it going guys? Hope you are all having a great day. In this video today, I'm introducing a brand new series that I'm doing. I'm really excited about it. I've been planning for the past couple of months or so. And what I'm going to be doing is documenting the process of building up a $100,000 stock portfolio. Hey, welcome back subscribers. If you're new to this channel, I like to talk about stocks investing and that green stuff that we all love, money. Now, as far as my actual investments go, my focus for this portfolio will mainly be dividend stocks as a means of producing income, primarily through dividends. And so my idea behind this is that I'm going to be earning dividends from these stocks, reinvesting those dividends, and I'll also be regularly contributing to this account as well, which will allow me to build up to this $100,000 stock portfolio. Now, the first thing you're probably wondering is where am I going to be investing? And as far as my investing strategy, which is going to be dividend investing, the best brokerage in my opinion, and the one that I'm going to be using is M1 Finance. And that is going to be for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's free. They do not charge any trading commissions and the minimum balance is just a hundred bucks to get started, which is a real easy way to start investing in the stock market. And I think it's just a great platform overall. Number two, M1 Finance allows you to invest in fractional shares, which means you don't have to have enough money to buy an entire share of any stock or ETF that trades on the platform. So the advantage here is that when I'm reinvesting my dividends across my portfolio, I don't have to worry about the share price and I can remain fully invested. The last reason I'll be using M1 Finance is because they do have a form of dividend reinvestment. And that will actually make more sense once we start earning some dividends in this portfolio. But essentially when you earn dividends, they can be reinvested across your entire portfolio and also they will be reallocated into your portfolio. So what that means is you set a target allocation in terms of how much money will be invested in each stock as a percentage and now as more money goes into the portfolio they're going to keep you as close as possible to that target allocation that you set with that said if you use my m1 finance link down below before february 28th and deposit a hundred dollars they're going to give you thirty dollars free just for signing up so don't miss out especially if you're a new investor looking for a brokerage to use now let's jump into my m1 finance portfolio all right guys so here we are inside my portfolio as of thursday february 18th my total value is 806 dollars and 81 cents with a gain of eight dollars and 29 cents that is a combination of market gains and dividends earned as you can see here up slightly just under two percent not great but then again this portfolio isn't even a month old yet you see here i invested my first 200 on january 25th and i have been consistently investing each week since and will continue to do so until i reach my goal of $100,000. Starting with my lowest position and working our way up. First up is Canoe, ticker GOEV. So far I'm down in this position, about 5.5%. I own just over one share with an average cost basis of $16.65. This is the only company in my portfolio that does not pay a dividend you can say this is my spec electronic vehicle play and i have it allocated to only three percent of my portfolio right now which i may or may not raise or lower as time goes on but needless to say i, I won't be going into anything else because i just put a real cool video out on canoe just a few days ago which you can view for yourself by clicking the link at the end of this video up next is microsoft ticker symbol msft the stock is considered a dividend achiever which is when a company raises their dividend for 10 or more consecutive years my positions run running a little flat right now and so are most of the others because they're all pretty new still again i only own a fraction of a share about 0.2 shares but again owning fractional shares allowed me to open a position and now i could work on establishing a bigger one through consistent contributions like we talked about earlier the average share price is 244 dollars and 72 cents and a dividend yield of one percent now i don't mind a small yield like this simply because not only will i be collecting a dividend but i believe i will see huge capital gains with this company as well it's like the perfect combination of income and growth speaking of microsoft has grown their dividend at a nine percent rate for the past 11 years and have paid their dividends uninterrupted for the past 15 they have a payout ratio of 32 percent which is actually low for most companies also good for us dividend investors they have a market cap of 1.8 trillion a dividend safety score of 99 and is currently trading at $243.79. If you're wondering where I'm coming up with the safety scores for these stocks, uh, it's actually a website called simplysafedividends.com. It's a portfolio tracker designed specifically for dividend investors like you and I. I think it's super helpful, so if you want to check that out, I left a link for you down below in the description. My third stock is an aristocrat, and to be considered one, you must be an S&P 500 company who has raised their dividend for at least 25 consecutive years and 
and that stock is McDonald's. Ticker MCD. Now, I just added this stock to the portfolio not even a week ago, and I'm down about a half a percent. I have 0.29981 shares and an average cost basis of $214.60. Now, this is a perfect example of how M1 Finance's fractional shares come into play. As you see, I do not own a full share yet, but remain fully invested. That is the beauty of it. And for those of you watching who don't know, I'll tell you this right now. Fractional shares will pay fractional dividends. You don't need a full share to receive that dividend payment, which is awesome. Now, this is a dividend paying stock that is currently yielding 2.3% with a PE ratio of 32 and a market cap of 160 billion. Just to fill some of you in, when I say PE, I mean price to earnings, which is the measurement of a stock price relative to its earnings. So this mega cap company is currently trading for $215.40 and is reasonably valued. Their payout ratio is 83% but should drop to 61% over the next 12 months and typically their payout ratio is usually higher than the average payout ratio for their industry but knowing that McDonald's has grown and paid their dividend to its shareholders for 46 years in a row I mean you can't go wrong. They're a worldwide company and in my opinion has the flexibility to adapt and perform well in just about any environment. Their EPS is projected to be $8.43 over the next 12 months, and having a solid dividend safety score of 77 makes McDonald's a great stock pick for me. The fourth stock in my portfolio is also a dividend achiever, introducing Matthews International, ticker MATW, valued at $75.87 with an almost 1% gain. And now with this stock, you can see I've already earned a dividend of a whopping 49 cents. I know you love to see your dividends coming in and I'm no different. If you're wondering what this number means, where it says value drift, it's the difference between the current value of this slice and my target value. Like right now, it's... 9.3% of my portfolio and I have it allocated to 11%. So in my case here, they will add the amount needed to the balance next time I fund my account. This will fluctuate as the stock price and market move up and down as well. Hopefully that made a little bit more sense to you. But I own 2.2 shares at an average cost of $33.23 a share, yielding 2.5% with a market cap of $1.1 billion. Matthews is currently trading at $33.50. This is the only small cap company I own at the moment, but let's take a look at some of their numbers for a second. Their payout ratio is super, super low, sitting at 26% giving them plenty of cushion to keep paying their dividend. Coming in below their five-year average with a PE of 11, and it's significantly lower when compared to the industrial sector's average PE of 21.3, showing signs of possibly being very undervalued depending on your outlook. But I have a ton of confidence in this company as they've grown and paid their dividends 27 years in a row, and their five-year dividend growth is sitting at a quick 9% growth rate, which is something I'm looking for in this portfolio as well. To me, when a company continues to grow and pay their dividend, chances are you got yourself a nice stable investment. This stock comes in with a safety score of 74. This next stock is a major player in healthcare pharmaceuticals and is slanging vaccinations across the world. None other than Pfizer, ticker PFE. I'm kind of flat on this stock with a value of $82.18. I own almost 2.4 shares and my cost basis is $34.95. This stock is my second big Biggest yielder sitting at 4% and has a PE of 22. This mega cap company has a market cap of $193 billion. Pfizer is another steady dividend payer as well, having grown and paid their dividend for 10 consecutive years, averaging 6% dividend growth per year and a safety score of 75. This is a vaccine play along with other numerous drugs in production and development, obviously, but most of all, it's a dividend stock and I believe I'll get some price appreciation here as well. I really just want to see how things pan out with this one over the next year or two. I never I present to you the dividend king of my portfolio and to be considered that the company must have raised their dividend for at least 50 consecutive years and that is 3m my current value is $99.56 with a gain of $4 up just over 4% I did earn 82 cents in dividends from this company they just haven't been distributed yet gains 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 I own half a share with an average price of $172.17 their safety score is 75 3m does offer a nice juicy 3.29% yield now now their yield is 24% above its five-year average, signaling to me that they may be undervalued right now, aka a good time to be investing. And I'm going to put in one of my favorite Warren Buffett quotes, price is what you pay, value is what you get. 3M isn't just considered a dividend king for no reason either. And this is going to sound ridiculous, but for the past 62 years in a row, they've grown and paid their dividend, which is incredible. They have a PE of 18.9, has a mega market cap of 102 billion. They also have a payout ratio of 67%, which is edging a little higher high for most companies, but with plenty of cash flow and an estimated EPS of $9.60, I'm glad I have this king in my corner. 
So the last three stocks are my largest investments so far. This one should come as no surprise, but here it is. Realty Income, ticker O. Also gets to be labeled as a dividend aristocrat, and I earned 26 cents in dividends already, and my current value is $116.36. So for those of you who are not familiar with the stock, it's a monthly dividend payer. In general, most companies pay their dividends quarterly while some pay it once a year realty income pays you monthly it's kind of their thing and what they're known for by the investing community i own just almost two shares with an average price of 61 dollars and three cents this company is my biggest yielder at 4.45 percent pe of 56 and a market cap of 23 billion realty income is currently trading at 61 dollars 76 cents and looks reasonably valued today in my opinion reits are very popular because of their relatively high yields and steady income they generate from income properties which is two of the main reasons many investors choose realty income including myself they come in with a dividend safety score of 70 and now my second to last stock is iipr innovative industrial properties coming in with a value of 128 dollars and 68 cents and i'm down about three and a half percent this stock is a reit that deals with the soon to be boom in cannabis industry they own properties in 17 states and that number will grow only as legalization and decriminalization continues i own 0.6 shares with an average cost basis of 216 dollars and 85 cents they have a market cap of almost $5 billion and a dividend yield of just over 2%. Now, this company has only been paying dividends for three years and has the lowest safety score in my portfolio at 60, which is borderline safe. I'm betting on that the cannabis industry continues to grow with IIPR collecting the rent and me collecting my dividends and capital appreciation with this one. Lastly, we have another aristocrat from the gas utility sector, Atmos Energy, ticker ATO, with a value of $154, market gain of almost 98 and a return of just over 5%. I own 1.64 shares at an average cost of $88.88. Atmos is another company that has a great track record of 37 years in a row where they grew and paid their dividend. Their five-year dividend growth rate is fast as well at 8%, bringing in a safety score of 97 and it's probably due to their low payout ratio of 47%. Market cap of $11.7 billion and a PE of 18.2, which is below their five-year average. Well, that is the nine stocks I own in my zero to $100,000 portfolio. Now, I know I really didn't go in depth about the company's businesses themselves, but I did give you guys some solid numbers that we all want to see in a dividend portfolio. Investing in growing, stable, reliable companies. In the near future, I do plan on making a video on each individual stock I'm invested in. Do some stock analysis, dig into the business a little further, and help you guys better understand why I'm investing in these companies. As far as this series goes, I will be giving you guys updates on the portfolio every week. I'm curious to see how many of you think I'll make it to 100k, do you? If you think I can, be sure to donkey kick that like button and subscribe, please. It really helps my channel out tremendously. I appreciate you all so much. And I can always use a little help with my investments as I'm always searching for the next one. So any questions, comments, and concerns, feel free to leave them down below in the comments section. Don't forget about the two links for you in the description down there as well. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It has been a pleasure. Remember, stay safe, stock up, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.